Hey everyone, this is Steve from GamersNexus.net, and we are back with our third episode of Tech Raid, our video roundup series of all the latest hardware news. Topics for this episode include NVIDIA's impending Maxwell launch, a new 16-core AMD CPU, AMD's FreeSync and NVIDIA's G-Sync variable refresh rate technologies compared, and 80 plus titanium certification. Let's start simple with this one. This week saw the approval and implementation of a new 80 plus certification standard level by Ecova. 80 plus titanium has been around since about 2012. Uh, Dell and Delta Electronics worked to produce the first titanium class server power supply, so it was not a consumer unit. And we saw titanium efficiency PSUs emerge last year in the consumer market or, or begin to emerge. They weren't released yet. And the standard only officially got approved a few days ago. The 80 plus titanium standard has a 90% efficiency at 10% load, which is damn remarkable for a power supply to achieve. And it boasts a 94% efficiency at 50% load. To give you an idea, that's versus 80 plus platinum's 92% efficiency at 50% load. So a pretty big jump there considering we're working with power and that's not so easy to be efficient with in power supplies. Moving on to CPUs, this is a bit more interesting. And these got some news to share regarding new server processors. The reason I'm mentioning it here is because a lot of server technology finds its way down the supply chain to consumers. So it could be relevant to the future of enthusiast class CPUs uh, should AMD continue making them. The new 16 core steamroller CPU isn't yet branded with marketing labels so it's operating under the fabulous name of Family 15H Model 30H-3FH with multiple CPUs in the same family essentially named 30H-4FH or 20H or so on. So the one we're looking at is the 30H-3FH model. Existing AMD Opteron server CPUs claim to offer 16 cores, but they do so by using two CPUs on the same substrate. With the new Steamroller chip, we'll see a single silicon die housing a single CPU, which then houses eight dual core modules as most uh, AMD CPUs utilize and that's a total of 16 cores. For those shaking heads at the core count, keep in mind that server implementations do tend to actually utilize all the cores on like games, and uh, especially when taking virtualization and blades into account if you do like VPS hosting or something like that. The 30H-3FH CPU makes moves to integrate the PCIe 3.0 controller onto the CPU itself, which furthers the movement of motherboard components to the die as, uh, as the memory controllers did in ages past. And this action reduces latency between the CPU and the controller by shortening the distance of travel and eliminating other buses. So it makes things a bit more streamlined for the CPU. I could see this potentially turning into some sort of FX product down the line if we're lucky. Uh, it, it won't be at least a year and probably two years before we even see the CPU in the server market though, so don't get your hopes up. It should be based probably on 20 nanometer class architecture because of this fab delay. Moving into video hardware, we now turn to news of Nvidia's Maxwell launch as posted by the Sui Clockers website. Sui Clockers claims that a source close to video card manufacturers has informed them of an impending 750 Ti GPU running Maxwell for February 18th. I don't have any way to validate this. It, it seems pretty legit. Sui Clockers is generally fairly trustworthy, but I can't validate it. Let's suppose it's true for sake of this content. Maxwell is the next step after Kepler and aims to make great strides in memory efficiency. And it, it does this by utilizing the existing CUDA instruction set, which allows programmers to eliminate explicit copy and export functions between the GP RAM and the system RAM, among other things. Uh, and Maxwell is able to further unify memory addressing in its architecture. So the significance is greater efficiency and reduced overhead, which is something that both AMD and Nvidia have been working to improve. So going forward, the cards will be able to leverage more of their power for functions that you actually care about. Similar strides have been taken with AMD technologies like the Mantle API, among other things. So our hardware greatly, right now, it greatly overpowers most software in terms of demand. So we're in an optimization stage right now. This is part of a normal healthy cycle for, for hardware development. And we are optimizing right now, which hopefully will yield uh, less overhead and more efficiency. 
the 750 Ti would supersede the existing 650 Ti boost, the boost being important, likely landing it in the 150 to 180 range, depending on memory capacity. So finally, we look at new display synchronization technology. We recently interviewed NVIDIA at CES, a link below, to discuss how G-Sync actually works. And the very same day, AMD announced its FreeSync technology, which of course NVIDIA couldn't comment on at the show, but they released that. And it's it's a somewhat humorous slam against Nvidia's you know costly G-Sync tech, and uh, and so we have FreeSync and G-Sync right now. So let let's discuss the similarities and the differences between them. First of all, both technologies aim to do the same thing. They both want to eliminate tearing or stuttering, which is introduced by asynchronous frame delivery between the video card and the display's refresh rate with a fixed refresh rate of say 60 hertz or 120 hertz on your monitor your display is expecting a new frame to be prepared for it by the gpu every 16 milliseconds or 8 milliseconds depending the gpu does the rendering as we all know it, it renders the frame and then sends it down the pipeline to the display and then the display presents it to the user so the problem here is that when the gpu misses its window it's 16 millisecond or 8 millisecond window because of a more complex scene we either get tearing or stuttering depending on what vsync is doing if vsync is enabled or not with vsync off you're all familiar with vsync in game settings with vsync off the display outputs the frame as it is rendered meaning that we can end up with tearing so it's actually it's spitting out the frames as they are drawn there is no delay and uh, the instance of multiple frames being rendered on screen simultaneously is what happens in this case so you end up with tearing as the name suggests the objects kind of don't line up the textures don't line up and it's something you really you don't think a whole lot about until you see uh, until you look for it until you see the smoothness that these new technologies offer with vsync on we sacrifice tearing in favor of stuttering that is generally inadvisable for most gamers. That's why you see VSync always recommended as off on competitive gaming forums. And this is because we can, as gamers, mentally compensate for tearing far better than we can for a missed frame because a missed frame is missing data. So you, you can't compensate for that which does not exist as far as you're concerned, but you can compensate for tearing because you kind of you, you just see where stuff belongs. A stutter occurs when the GPU misses its render window, and so the monitor displays the previous frame a second time, and that's far more influential in competitive gaming. G-Sync and FreeSync both make it so that the monitor slaves to the video card. So the display refresh rate is now variable, meaning that the frequency will update as the video card dispatches new information. This results in far smoother gameplay and FreeSync does it using a V blank underscore V blank attribute, look it up, available in some monitors all, all through software. Meanwhile, G-Sync does it with a hardware accelerated module that lives on the display, thus in increasing the cost of the display uh, marginally so we haven't yet had an extended hands-on with FreeSync, but that kind of gives you an overview of the two i wanted to touch on it since uh since FreeSync was just announced and g-sync is big right now that's it for this tech raid episode please remember to subscribe so you can keep up to date hit the news article below for all the links that are relevant and check out our patreon subscriber page if you'd like to support us in our endeavors it, it's a huge help shows us that you care and i will see you all next time peace